We are back with our guest, Jesse McKinney. We've got some calls on, and I'm just trying to tell Jesse during the break there uh, that we're going to do a little, pull a little sound bite and run this on our newscast at 10 o'clock uh, tonight uh, in case some other viewers didn't see it. So, again, we, we appreciate uh, you being here and sharing um, your insight. Okay, let's go to Carolyn, who is holding on line three. Hi, Carolyn. Welcome to Open Line. Good evening to y'all. Good evening. What's on your um, mind? I, ha I have a comment. Okay. Uh, until we get uh, some conservative judges in power here in uh, Nashville area uh, and people that uh, put criminals in jail and keep them there instead of having them back out on the streets over and over again, committing crimes over and over again, until we do that, we're going to have problems here in Nashville. Yep. Uh, with all the tourists here, yeah. uh, I, I advise anybody 18 and up to bring some weapons with you because this is a dangerous town now. Well, Carolyn, and until Carolyn, we get let me ask you, I'm sorry to interrupt. Let me ask you, though, about, you know, a lot of these, um, especially juvenile crime, we know in Nashville is, is just... Um, a big problem a lot of these kids are like we said earlier are just walking up to cars and and gun owners are being irresponsible and leaving their their weapons in their cars unlocked what should we do about that too well i think it's idiotic to leave your yeah. weapons in your car but um these uh these young people are not uh, they're not having to spend very much time right. in jail uh, they're not afraid to commit the crimes. If we start, you know, putting them in jail for a while and keeping them there instead of having them back out on the streets over and over and over right. again, because some of these people commit crimes and then they're back out. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we need some conservative judges, and I'm looking for some, but it seems like all of our judges in the area are Democrats, and they're easy on criminals. Carolyn, thank you for the call. We appreciate it. A uh, little uh, crime and punishment comment there. But we have, we've done a whole series called Broken about our broken juvenile justice system. And we know there are problems. And um, these are, to me, not Democrat or Republican issues. But again, people have very strong opinions about what we should do. And yes, we have a, an issue with our courts. Uh, with sentencing and punishment and recidivism and kind of a you know a revolving door there with, with these juveniles and others who, who are committing crimes and on the other hand are we gonna hold people responsible for irresponsible gun ownership it, you know it's a big issue it's not only metro it's all across the state uh, but let's go back to the phones thank you Carolyn we really appreciate it we'll go to line two Williams holding hi William Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a law-abiding citizen, mm -hmm. NRA member, mm -hmm. and uh, have a lifetime gun carry permit. You a hunter? That I was issued by, I'm a hunter. Okay. I am an avid hunter. I've been hunting since I was 10 years old. All right. I've carried a gun since I've been 10 years old deer hunting and everything my whole life. And let and, me do, and let me just interrupt, I, William. Uh, I'll bet you when you were 10 years old, either your dad or a family member, uncle, brother, whoever, um, they taught you the right and wrong about that gun. Exactly, And sir. I bet they were serious I mean, about it, too. Very serious. Yeah. I learned to never point my gun in any direction, either up in or down to the ground. Right, right. And like I said, I've, I'm a lifetime gun carry permit holder by the law. I ain't got yeah. this new little law. Yeah. And and I'm very respected. I'm a. I've worked for a company for 40 years. I'm retired. I'm 64 year old. Yeah. I've got a family member that's trying to get my gun rights took away from me by order of protection. Mm. And this is silly. Okay. What is the? Uh, what's the reasoning? Oh, he claims I threatened his life. I was deer hunting, in the, in a, and I was in a tree, and I had a muzzle loader, and I come down, and, uh, and me and him had words, right. but I never pointed my gun at right. him or nothing. And now he's trying to get me for a, a order of protection, and, he, and, and they can keep my guns locked up for a year. Now, how am I going to protect my family right. when some thief comes knocking at my door and kicks my door in? 
Well, I, I don't know much about that process, um, but, um, you know, I, yeah, I'm not sure how that, what kind of, uh, you know, evidence or whatever they would need to actually go that far to take if you, if you say you've been a responsible gun owner most of your life. Have you well, contacted... All they had to do is, have you contacted an sir, attorney? all they had to do was go out... Huh? Have you contacted an attorney? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. I've got an attorney, and I'm going to court with you for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, okay. Like I said, all they got to do is go out here to the jailhouse and say that, tell their lies, and then they go in there and get you in court and, and ruin your name and your lep, uh, reputation and everything and cause all these problems. Yeah. Well, uh, see, this, this, that's silly. I'm sorry for your situation, William, but before we wrap this up, can I ask you a more broad, general question uh, uh, about um, guns here in Tennessee and gun owners and, and uh, how they should be, if they should be held responsible for uh, not paying attention? Oh, yeah. I've got a gun site. I've got a 60 gun. I've got a Liberty gun site that holds 60 guns. I'm yep. a collector. Yep. I'm an avid rabbit hunter, squirrel yep. hunter, a quail hunter, turkey hunter. I mean, I, yep. my kids, they, they are taught to yep. not even touch a gun. Yeah. Well, if William, uh, thank you. We're on a little bit of a time crunch. Thank you, and, and keep us posted on your situation there. All right, real quick, once again, HB 1735. I know you jotted down, Jesse, uh, when I was mentioning the Senate uh, committee. How many volunteers are, are you watching from home? Are, are volunteers actually going up to the Hill? Obviously, it depends on, because, again, you're volunteers, and you're doing other things working family all of that yes. how does that work yes you know we actually have some great um dedicated volunteers that live in the nashville area and they often will show up to committee hearings wearing their red mom's demand action shirts we also are known uh, to be uh, to offer testimony um, in support okay. or against bills as well so yeah you usually can see some of us in the committee hearing room <laughs> nice and, and visible, huh? Uh, if someone yes. wants to uh, get in touch with your group, or if they're interested, they have an issue, um, how would they go about doing that? Yeah, you know, you can get um, connected with Moms to Men Action by texting the word JOIN, J-O-I-N, to 64433. We also have a website, momsdemandaction.org. Or if you're on Facebook, we do have a uh, Facebook page for our Tennessee chapter, Moms to Men Action Tennessee. How many people in the Tennessee chapter? Do you know? Oh, wow. Roughly? That's volunteers. a number I don't know, but okay. we've got volunteers all across the state. Right. Um, all right. Uh, we will keep it. Before we wrap this up, we've got about two minutes left before this break. Any other legislation or at least proposals that may come up? Uh, next session that you're keeping an eye on? Yeah, one thing that we're keeping an eye on is funding for community violence interruption programs or intervention programs. Mm -hmm. Th these are programs that um, treat gun violence like a public health epidemic. So they recognize that oftentimes gun violence is clustered into certain communities or certain neighborhoods. And so it's um, funding that puts people on the ground in those neighborhoods to help with conflict resolution, to respond in moments when there may be a violent act, so right. not a retaliatory act. So definitely getting some funding to prevent violent crime, especially when it's tied to specific neighborhoods or communities. Right. And that's called community right. violence intervention programs. So once it's classified as a, an epi health ep epidemic, it kind of opens doors for different kind of funding as well, right, and resources. You know, that is something I'm not really okay. familiar with that, but I know in the past that has been something that like on a federal level, there's been some red tape around if we can mm -hmm. call gun violence an epidemic and treat it as a public health crisis versus something else. So I think that's something that's kind of up there in the federal side. Sure. All right. Well, learned a lot today. Uh, tonight, <laughs> we, we appreciate you coming on and we'll we'll try to keep an eyeball on things as they develop as well. Jesse McKinney. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys for having me tonight. All right, quick break. We'll wrap things up with Open Line right after this.